Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial from ADSR and MassiveSynth.com. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel and you want to do that, you can at youtube.com forward slash ADSR toots. That was a quick playthrough of the sound we'll be making, and I have multiple tracks here, so let me explain what they are. This first one is the Swedish lead that we'll be actually making in Massive. And the only third party processing that I have on it is the sidechain compression. So if I take that off, it sounds like this. Still a kind of a really thick and huge lead. And then I have this piano from Nexus that just to fill out that Swedish house sound and a simple bass. But I'll be muting those now. And then here, of course, are the kick, kick drums. So let me mute this. And this is our brand new sound in Massive. So something to take away from this tutorial, it, it would be the modulation, the macros I set up. You can apply these kind of tips and tricks to a lot of genres and a lot of different types of sounds. So I'll actually do those real quick first. Uh, so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna clear macro one. And then I'm going to label this detune. And I'm gonna label macro two cutoff. And I am going to label macro three reverb and this will just give you more control over those parameters that we'll set up as we go so first thing you're going to want to do you're going to want to keep oscillator one on this square saw wave one and keep it on spectrum and you can keep the intensity the wavetable position the amp all the way and then what we're going to do because we're in we're in oscillator one right now we're going to take our fifth lfo and we're going to grab the crosshair and we're going to modulate the pitch a little just to about negative 40. And that's all you have to do for oscillator one. And now we're going to activate oscillator two. And you're going to keep it on the square saw one. And you're going to keep it on spectrum. And you're going to keep the wavetable position and the intensity and the amp all the way up. And you're going to keep this, the filter one, filter two slider in the middle. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our macro one that we just named a second ago. And we're going to modulate the pitch down to about negative 45. And for oscillator three, we're going to take actually a unique waveform for this that's actually going to make the sound really thick. We're going to take the, uh, the poly saw two. And if I just solo that, that's actually not. It's not in your, um, it's standard tuning. It has a, obviously a weird tune. So you can hear that that's not super musical. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the pitch of that up to 19. I'm going to turn the amp down, and I'm going to take the wave table position down just a little bit. And that's helping add to the detuned sound, which is great for Swedish House and just huge saw leads in general. So now let's activate the modulation oscillator. And all we're really going to do is we're going to take, we're going to activate the phase, and we're going to apply that to our oscillator three. And I'm going to leave it to about a little bit under 50%. I just want it to beef up that sound. So for the oscillator three, the polysol waveform. So if I take this off, it's really high pitch sounding. Whereas that's adding some beef and some grit to it. So all that together. And moving on to the noise oscillator, we're going to keep it on white, and we're just going to turn up the amp a little bit. And then we're going to activate the feedback, and we're going to turn that up just a pinch. And now on insert one, just moving uh, left to right here, we're going to take the, the uh, parabolic shaper, and we're going to take the dry wet just a little bit above 50%. And then the drive, you can leave it about 50%. We're going to modulate that actually with our, with our cutoff. So we're going to grab that now and then modulate it out. And 
I'm going to go to my routing tab real quick, and I'm going to make sure that I have... I want insert to active over here in this part of the signal flow as opposed to here by default. And then I want to make sure the feedback is there instead of here, which it is, so that's good. And then we're going to, on insert two, we're going to activate it and take the sign shaper. And for the dry wet, we're going to turn this down a good amount. And then we're going to take the drive and just a little bit under 50%. Okay, let's activate our filters now. So for filter one, we're gonna take the low pass two and you're gonna turn the resonance down and we're actually going to turn the cutoff down almost all the way. And what we're actually gonna do here, we're gonna take our envelope four, which, you've, which we've yet to set up, and we're gonna modulate that in this open slot out here. And then we're gonna take the cutoff macro that we created and we're actually gonna drag that down. And Massive has this thing, I don't know if you've ever noticed where, you can actually keep dragging a little ways after what looks like it hits zero. Um, you can see it's not going up. Am I moving my mouse up? And that will actually affect the sound. And now we're going to activate filter two for this as well. And we're actually going to take the bandpass filter type. And then let's crank up this the volume knob for that filter. And the bandwidth, we're going to turn to just under about 50. The resonance turned down to zero. And the cutoff, we're going to turn just about 20, 25%. And now we're going to take this cutoff too that we created, and we're going to modulate the mixes. So when we turn this cutoff knob, it's going from, it's activating filter one to filter two. And we're going to take that same macro, and we're going to apply it to our filter for serial in parallel. And now let's go to the, uh, let's start going through some of the voicing, because we need to, to get that big Swedish sound, we need to introduce more voices. So let's take this up to six. And we're going to take, we're going to activate the pitch cutoff for the unison spread and move that out just a little. I'm going to actually activate this pan position as well. And I'm going to turn this out, turn, turn this knob almost all the way up. That's really spreading out the sound, which is great for Swedish, sound, Swedish house sounds. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, key tracking oscillator, and we're going to drag these all the way up. We want kind of a square shape. So, and then we're actually going to do the same thing to the key tracking filter. So by default, it kind of has a slant, and we want all the notes to be equally open in the filter. So we're going to take this, these points and drag it up. And you can see that had a huge effect on the sound, so don't, don't miss that step if you're trying to recreate the sound faithfully. And now what we're going to do is let's actually start to dial in some of our envelope settings. So envelope one, what we're going to do is we're going to create a kind of a quick slanting decayed shape. So we're going to turn the attack all the way down. We're going to take the decay and move it to the right a little. And then on the level, we're going to turn that down al almost all the way to nothing. And the re release at about just a pinch under halfway. And then we're actually going to modulate the level of this. So let's bring the level down with our cutoff filter. And 
we're actually going to take take our envelope one and we're going to just a little bit add a little bit of that modulation to our intensity on oscillator one and that's really all we have to do for envelope one now let's move on to envelope two which we'll be using to kind of add a pre-delay effect to the reverb so for the shape, what we're going to do is we're going to take the attack time and drag it almost just a little bit above 50%, I would say. And we're going to take the decay down and then the level all the way out and the release at about 50 so you get that quick slanting box and downward slope. So that's going to have no effect on the sound because it's not routed to the output or anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the reverb. And in the reverb, we're going to... For the density, take this up to about 75% and the color, so it's a little bit brighter. Now we're going to take that macro that we named reverb in the beginning, and we're going to put that in the first empty slot, and we're going to just drag that out just a little. And we're actually going to take this envelope too, and you're going to go downwards with it. So you'll notice that you don't hear the reverb as pronounced while the sound's playing. But when I hit stop, you hear it. Now if I take this off, that macro we just put on the dry wet, you hear the reverb the whole time. So that's actually adding a little bit of pre-delay because on our envelope too, we added a good amount of attack to the sound. Now let's add a little bit of synced delay and we're going to keep it on 416 and 416 for the ratios. And on the EQ we're actually going to take our fourth envelope which we which we need to set up and we'll just do it now. We're going to add a little bit of high shelf to it. Actually, I'm going to take the second envelope for that. Sorry about that. So let's set up, speaking of our fourth envelope, let's set that up now. So what we're going to do is you're going to take the attack, turn it all the way down, and the level, keep it all the way up, the decay down just a little bit, and then the level at about halfway. So this line for the decay should be actually... Um, sorry, this, this line right here... So let's move our release to get that in. That line should kind of match up with the T on trig zero reset. I'm going to turn the bandwidth up just a little bit, and I'm actually going to take this first macro, I mean this first envelope, and I'm going to modulate the cutoff of our filter too. And that is basically the sound, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. And if you haven't headed over to MassiveSynth.com, check it out. Lots of, lots of tutorials, presets, everything Massive. I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.